everybody. It is good to see all of you folks. Oh, that, that side over there is becoming better and better Lutherans because they're moving farther and farther back. Isn't that what we do? Um, it is good to see all of you folks. Today we're talking about compassion, about having compassion upon one another as the Lord has compassion upon us. And that's why you have this picture of Joseph on the front of your bulletin because his brothers had done him wrong. What's that song about? You done me wrong. Well, they done Joseph wrong and instead of punishing them or taking revenge on them, he had compassion upon them. So our songs today, our prayers, our service, our message, all are revolving around that. So without further ado, um, let us Start with our opening song. You'll have the words up on the screen or in your bulletin. This is called At Your Feet. And the praise team will lead us in that.
Thank you. Shall we rise as we join in our order of service? It's printed out for you or be up on our screens. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now confess our sins to God, our merciful Father. O most gracious God, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We know well that we are by nature sinful and unclean. Daily we have done things we ought not to have done, and have not done that which we are to have been doing as your faithful servants. We have been unforgiving and loveless and careless in the stewardship of your creation. We deserve your punishment in this life and for eternity. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is not in ourselves, but in the merits of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, O God. Grant us remission of all our sins and guide us into renewed lives that reflect your goodness and love. God is indeed gracious and merciful and hears our supplications, having compassion upon us. By the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, and as his called and ordained servant, I am able to say that all of our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, we join together in Psalm 67. This serves as our introit as we symbolically enter into the presence of Almighty God. We join together. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, and if you'll join together with me in these words. O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devout prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant that what we ask in faith we may obtain. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Heather is going to be sharing with us a little snippet of the travails of Joseph from Genesis and also some more teachings from the Apostle Paul. The Old Testament reading for today is from Genesis chapter 50. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they asked, it may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil we did for him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your, father, of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for I am in the place of God. 
As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he could comfort them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 14. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over options. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the ones who eat, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or he falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who deserves the day observes it in the honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in the honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. While the one who abstains abstains in the honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this ends Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother, or you... Why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you, Heather. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Hallelujah! If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Hallelujah! Jack is going to share with us an interesting little snippet where Peter thought he was being magnanimous by saying, how many times should he forgive my brother? His brother, seven times seven, and this is what Jesus said. The Holy Gospel this morning is found in Matthew chapter 18, beginning with verse 21. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven. Seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went to put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went to report to their master all that had taken place. The master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. 
And should not you have mercy on your fellow servant as I have mercy on you? And in his anger delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from, you, from your heart. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. O Christ. Thank you, Jack. As our creed for today, we're going to do a section of it out of our catechism. This is the second article dealing with Jesus Christ. In the second article of the creed, we confess Jesus to be the Savior, the one who fulfills God's promises and brings us forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. So let us join together in this article. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity, this is most certainly true. You may be seated. This song is kind of an interesting one because in the midst of it, it talks about the compassion of our Lord. And that's what we're talking about today, that the Lord has had compassion upon us. And this old song, which is public domain, it goes back quite a ways. Um, you'll see um, in some of your hymn books that it was back in 1923 that it was actually put out. So therefore, it is open for all of us to use and sing. Shall we? Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy commands, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All that I have did thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their Forces above, join with all nature in manifold blessing. To thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies 
I sing. All of thy hated by hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let's have the kids come up and let's sing a little song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. You must really like that, brother. My sisters were never so nice to me. They would be picking on me like that, but not tickling. They would be. We're talking today about a young man. Tell me about what you would do in this guy's place. This young man had 11 brothers. Can you imagine having 11 brothers instead of just one? Well, these brothers were jealous <coughs> because their father thought that this was just the cat's meow, this young man by the name of Joseph. And... The brothers thought that the father loved him more than he loved the rest of the bunch. But anyway, he bought Joseph a pretty robe, a beautiful robe. And back in the day, they used to call it the multicolored dream coat, back when Weber and Rice had a play about that. But anyway, he came out one day. They were out, way out in the boonies, and they had the cattle out there and the livestock, and they were letting them roam around, and Joseph had gone out. I can't remember if it was bring him water or something like that, and they were jealous to the point where they said, let's kill our brother. So they threw him in a hole in a cistern, and he was down there all bloodied up, and they said, well, okay, what are we going to tell our father now? What are we going to tell Jacob happened to Joseph? So one brother had a brilliant idea. He saw a group of Midianites wandering by, and he said, Hey, come over here. We got a slave for you. You want to buy him? He's cheap today. So they sent him off with the Midianites, and they put him into slavery. And they took that cloak that he had, that multicolored dream coat, and they put blood on it from one of the animals. And they took it home, and they told the father he had been eaten by a by a wild animal. Anyway, years and years later, he winds up being, Mo, uh, Joseph did, uh, uh, an official in Egypt. And his brothers showed up because they needed something to eat and Joseph had grain. He was in charge of it. What would you do if your brothers had thrown you in a hole had claimed to the father that you were dead and sold you into slavery, what would you do when they showed up? 
What do you think they should have done? Okay, he did. He gave them the food. But what in the real world would you think would happen? Yeah, they'd be very sarcastic, like, good to see you again, and you're going, no, it isn't. What would probably happen in the real world is he would show, they would show up and they would go, guess what? I'm the brother that you threw down in the pit. I'm the brother that you claimed was dead. I'm the brother that was sold into slavery, and I wound up having to do all these crazy things. I wound up being in Egypt. I wound up working in a man's house by the name of Potiphar. By the way, that's the first mention of tennis in the Bible because Joseph served in Potiphar's court. <laughs> and his wife had the hots for him, and she wanted Joseph, you know, to come in and hug and kiss, and Joseph's like, no, no, thank you, no, thank you. So she made up a story about him, and he was thrown into prison. And in prison, he interpreted the jailer's dream. And the Pharaoh, the king, a Pharaoh is just a king, started having these, these dreams about seven fat cows coming out of the Nile over in Egypt, and then followed by seven skinny cows. And then one, he had like the grain that he saw, and they were like full. It was like the corn that I saw that I bought the other day from Kirby's. It's so full and juicy compared to the corn that I saw out there in Atlas, Illinois, that was all shriveled and dried up. And somebody said, oh, I know somebody that can interpret your dream. So Joseph was brought into the Pharaoh, and he said, you're going to have seven years of plenty, and then you're going to have seven years of famine. So Pharaoh went, okay, you're the dude. You're going to be in charge. You are my steward to make sure we collect enough food to make it through the lean years. And that's how his brothers came to be there because in those lean years of drought, his brothers came down to see if they could buy some grain from Egypt. And that's where it brings us up to the story today. And what do you think happened when he showed up? Did Joseph say, hey, this is them? Throw them in the brink. Scourge them. Beat them. Throw them out. Don't give them any grain. What happened really? And then he what? He forgave them, didn't he? And he had compassion upon them. So we're going to talk about that today. He did something different than most of us would do. We go, yeah, we got even with them. People that hurt us, sometimes it's easy to say, wait till I get that guy, wait till I get him back. You know, in the real world that happens. But it's hard to say, no, I'll forgive you, even if I am not asking forgiveness, and even if I don't deserve it. Because what does the Lord say? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So that's what we have to do. When people hurt us, we don't automatically turn back and hurt them, do we? We forgive them, and we turn them over to the Lord's care. Well, thank you so much for coming up. We're going to continue talking about Joseph for just a little bit. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Joseph had sent back his uh, brothers. It took them a while to realize who Joseph really was in this position of prominence. They hadn't seen him in years and years. And he kept one of them, uh, Simeon, the second oldest, and kept him as a hostage and put him in prison until they would go back and get Benjamin, who had stayed with his father because the father didn't want to lose all the, the sons. So he kept that one, who is now, I guess, the favorite because the youngest, any youngest people in the family here? Youngest kids? Well, you know you're the favorite. And the older kids know that, don't they? Um, really, you're not the favorite. It's just that your parents were older by the time they had you, and they made all their mistakes on the first kids. That's why grandparents are so nice, too. It's like, we can spoil them because we're sending them back home. Did your grandpa spoil you, Solomon? I, I know I'm putting them on the spot. 
Is that the same father, Brian, that, uh, that you see treating Solomon in different ways? He's kind of mellowed, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you'll see that, Solomon. One day you'll bring uh, your kids over to see Brian and say, is this the same guy? They're jumping on the couch. He's going, ah, don't worry about it. Ah, they're jumping on the bed. No, don't worry about it. Here, let me give you some money. <laughs> but that's what happened is that he sent back, and they came back, and they brought the father, and that was uh, Jacob. And they realized who Joseph was. And Joseph basically said, when my father and uh, my family is here, he set them up, and they got uh, uh, grazing ground for their, for their livestock, and they got grain, and they were able to survive. But one day came where the father died. And the brothers were concerned that Joseph had only been putting up with them for the sake of the father. So they were afraid. So they sent a message by a servant to Joseph, and it said that. It said, tell Joseph, this is what our father said before he died, which he may or may not have really said. But this is what they said. They said, tell them that our father said... Say to Joseph, please forgive the transgressions of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Well, whether that was true or not, when they showed up, Jesus, or I should say Joseph, had compassion on them and he wept and he forgave them. We can talk about the time of Jesus as well. Because in the time of Jesus, he was wrongly accused, wasn't he? He was arrested. He was beaten. He was marched up the side of a hill and crucified like a common criminal. And Caiaphas, who was the acting priest that year, had prophesied. He said, it is expedient for one man dying than the whole nation to be dying. And he was prophetic in a different way than what he thought. He was choosing the lesser of evils. You see, out of jealousy, the brothers had brought evil upon Joseph, but God used it for the ultimate good to save all the people from starving in the lands. And this evil that was perpetrated upon Jesus, God's own Son, was for the ultimate good that the Lord had. Because with Jesus, there was going to be forgiveness for sins. Jesus was going to go to a gruesome death, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally, and suffering hell on that cross, not for his sins, not for his problems of jealousy, not for his biting anger, not for anything that he had done, but for all people's sins of all time. We talked about this before. We talked about whether God was fair or not. Was that really fair, what happened to Joseph? No. But justice was served eventually because forgiveness was made manifest. Same thing with Jesus. No, God was not fair when it came to the sinfulness of the world, our sins, because he took them out on his own son instead of making us pay. And it brings us to this point in our lives. Because having been delivered from evil, and we are delivered from evil, we all have a different problem. All of us are doing the things that we shouldn't do, or we don't do the things that we should do, and the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our brain, and we talked about in Bible class that we sin over and over and over again. We sin much daily as Luther says. We're in a fix in many ways. We go to our Lord God and we repent. We fess up. He knows all, he sees all anyway. We might as well fess up. And we do. We come here and we have confession. And we say that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed. But you see, we being delivered from evil are put to a task. 
because God uses us then through that forgiveness from our evil and for our sinfulness for the ultimate good. You know, we go back to the time with Jesus, and Jesus, after John the Baptist was beheaded, he went off to be by himself. And you know how you do sometimes when you lose people that you love, you want to have time off. And it says this, now when Jesus heard this about John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a lonely place. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And as he went ashore, he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them and healed the sick. And it was not long after that that he fed the 5,000 men, not including women and children. We're told again in Matthew 9, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Compassion is an interesting thing because Joseph had compassion on his brothers, even though they didn't deserve it. The Lord God has compassion on all of us through the death and the life of Jesus Christ. And we are likewise to have compassion upon people that are around us. It's hard to have compassion upon people that don't seem to be so needing that compassion or wanting that compassion or even aware of the fact that they are in such dire straits. It's hard, isn't it, to forgive people that don't ask for forgiveness even if they hurt us? That's why Peter thought he was being magnanimous when he said to Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times 70? Seven times seven? Seven times? And Jesus said, no, it needs to be an innumerable amount. Because according to rabbinic laws, you forgive somebody three times, you're okay. But our Lord God has done that for us. He has had compassion on us. And we go to him time and time and time again asking for forgiveness. It's easier for us to say, well, that person has hurt me, so I'm going to hurt them back. Is that the way they're going to talk about me? Let me tell you about them. And yet it says, vengeance is mine, I shall repay, saith the Lord. That's from Deuteronomy 32, verse 35. If we truly have compassion on other people, that's a special kind of a thing. Empathy is that I empathize with you, that I can feel your pain, that I can see your sorrow, but having compassion compels us to do something. And the goodness that we do to other people is in the form of what we call the fruits of the Spirit. Now, I'm going to read these off to you from Galatians and think about how many of these nine fruits of the Spirit deal with our relationship with other people. Paul says this, We should have love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Look at how many of those deal with other individuals. If you love, you're going to love the Lord your God, but you're also going to love your neighbor as you love yourself. You're going to love those who are unlovable, even as the Lord has loved us when we are unlovable. The joy that we get, well, that's something that's a byproduct of serving our Lord God. The peace that we have. The peace that we are supposed to make between those people that even are our enemies. Forbearance is something dealing with other people. You deal with them even if they don't want to deal with us. And you deal with the differences. How about kindness? How about works and deeds of kindness. You remember the, the little thing that was going around that we should pay it forward? Well, a comedian one time said, well, yeah, um, one time I went through the line at Taco Bell and I just got a burrito a, and a cup of coffee and the lady at that checkout window said, well, the person in front of you paid for your meal. She goes, are you going to pay for the people behind you? And he looked in the mirror, and here was a family with five kids in there, and he said, nope, and drove right off. But 
works of kindness, goodness, goodness gracious. How many of us have goodness when it comes to other individuals? When they look at our lives and they go, that is a good person. Look at the way they live and they really care for individuals. The faithfulness that we have in the Lord God, the faith we have in Him, and the faith that we must share with other people. The gentleness that we're supposed to exhibit. It's really easy to get back and get even and be rough with people who seem to be rough with us. This is a difficult world, but what about gentleness? Did you ever see how a new baby is held by a father? Do you remember those days when they feel, look like they're all falling apart and the father's like, I don't, you know, and finally they give that baby to him and he's sitting there in the rocking chair and he learns how to hold that baby with gentleness. Well, it's more difficult, isn't it, when that baby grows all up and you still are supposed to hold that baby with gentleness. But we learn to do it. We learn to be gentle with one another. And self-control. I grew up in an Irish family and it's like everybody, they got along. You've heard me talk about it. We all talked in 90 decibels and everybody was, let's go! That's how everybody got along. There was no self-control. If I'm mad at you, I'm going to tell you I'm mad at you. If I don't like you, I'm going to tell you I don't like you. And it goes on and on and on. We have to have self-control. Not just to count to ten, but to ask the Lord for us to get a hold of ourselves and get a hold of the situation. You see, if we truly have compassion, we not only empathize with other people, but we look upon them with love and kindness, even as the Lord looks upon us with love and kindness. My son, I read him a little story on the way here. Um, he's my new chauffeur. Did you ever watch The Lincoln Lawyer on Netflix? That gave me the idea. My wife says I'm a distracted driver. Not a bad one, just a distracted one. So he drives me and I read him things. And one was a little story about this woman that goes to a grocery store. And we've, had, we've seen this before. You know, where the mom is there and she's got the baby here and she's back in the days when people had cash. Remember the cash? Remember dollar bills and dead presidents? Well... She had all these groceries, and she was $12 short. So what does she start to do? Take things out of the bag. And the, the line of people are, you know, getting disgruntled, and the checkout lady's going, oh, okay, we'll take this off and this. And all of a sudden, a $20 bill comes down there on the conveyor belt, and this guy says, take it out of there. And the lady turned around and said, no, no, you don't have to do that. He goes, let me tell you a story. He says, I've been seeing my mother who is in a hospice, she has terminal cancer every day for the last month and a half. And I bring her flowers every day. And this morning I went to visit with her and she said, stop bringing me flowers. She says, use that money for good. So he looked at that 20 and he said, that is my mother's flower. So I want us all to keep that in mind to be that kind of an individual, to be able to share the mother's flowers with all of those we meet, to have compassion and forgiveness for other people and love them even as the Lord has loved us. In the blessed name of Jesus, amen. Let's take this moment of uh, returning back to our Lord just a little bit of what he has given to us. Everything is good, kind, wonderful, beautiful, generous comes from the Lord. So let's return a little back to the provider of all that.
See, I can't play it if I don't sing along. Thank you, Steve. We do, Heavenly Father, ask that you utilize these gifts to spread the word of forgiveness, to spread that word of compassion that we might have upon one another, so that we might spread the word of Jesus Christ, your Son, the ultimate example of compassion, of mercy, and love. We ask that in the blessed name of your Son, Lord, in your mercy. We do, Lord God, come to you, and we thank you for, for your forgiveness, for that double miracle of forgiveness and forgetfulness through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Help us, Lord God, to go forward into this world knowing that we not only whisper prayers in your ears, but speak the words of forgiveness to other individuals. Not only fold our hands in prayer, but reach out a helping hand. And we always talk about our feet being shod with righteousness and going to the places that you would have us to go. Help us in this endeavor. We raise up to you, Lord God, so many people uh, that are having difficulties this day. We pray for Donna Johnson, the sister of Kay Jackson, who is in hospice care. We pray for Betty Strickler, who is in Proctor Health Care Center after breaking her hip. We pray, Lord God, for Sally Thomas and Tom Burlett. These are friends of Liz Reed and Teresa Armstrong. We have been praying for Marsha Hoffman, mother of Gordon. We pray, Lord God, for Lisa uh, Dougherty in her treatment program. We pray for her mom, who is healing up after breaking her leg, Diane. All of these are your children, Lord God. Give them a good measure of your healing touch according to your divine will. But most importantly, remind them if they ask for your healing touch spiritually, you say a resounding yes name of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. We do, Lord God, pray for all of those who are police officers, highway patrolmen, um, the deputy sheriffs and sheriffs, our servicemen and National Guard, wherever they might be, the people that work on these streets and the linemen who keep the electricity going. Send your angels down to watch over and protect them as they are serving us. Lord, in your mercy. We make a claim on peace, Lord God, that you bring peace to this world, not only in the Ukraine, but in the many other places where people are embattled. Be with the leaders, Lord God. Use them as tools in your mighty hands, not to seek vengeance and retribution, but teach them compassion, Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we do come before you with these individuals that we name in our hearts to you that we are concerned about. We raise them up to you, Lord God. Let us be true examples of what it means to believe in you. For we preach a sermon by what we say and by what we do each and every day. Let us be your ambassadors, Lord, and lead these people to the wonderful message of forgiveness and life everlasting through your Son, Jesus. It's in his blessed name that we pray and that we rise and join in the prayer which he has taught us. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before you sit down, I'd like to have, um, I know Solomon's coming forward, but the rest of you that went through our catechism class this summer, if you'd like to come forward for a reaffirmation of your faith, and in support of uh, a Solomon, that would be wonderful. Come on up at this time, and the rest of you may be seated. <coughs> <coughs> Anybody else would like to come up? All right, you stand. That way you can't run off from us, right? <laughs> Now, 
This is uh, Solomon Oduro uh, Minta, and you, the, you, we, we've seen Solomon, the other Solomon, the younger Solomon that's been with him here, his grandson, and Brian is here today. We're glad to have them here. Um, and we're glad to have all of you here because we're all part of that family of faith, and we're glad uh, to have you among us. I'm going to address this to all of you that are up here. Do you desire to become a member and continue to be a member of our Savior Lutheran Church? Yes. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. Do you believe that the teachings of this church are in accordance with Holy Scripture? Yes. Do you believe that the writings of Martin Luther in the small and large catechisms and the confessional statements we have in the Book of Concord are the true exposition of our faith? Yes. Will you support this congregation with your time and your talents and your treasure so the word might get out about our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Yes. And I address the congregation, will you members here accept, care for, pray for, and befriend these fellow members of our family of faith? So answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. We welcome you then and welcome you back into our fellowship of faith with the right hand of fellowship. Let us pray. We do, Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you do for us. We ask that you would bless these, your children, that they would be um, edified, Lord God, and and see the wonderful love that you have by coming to church, by participating in the Bible studies and the fellowship groups, that you truly might open our eyes and ears, that we might hear and we might see. Be with Solomon, be with all of us, Lord God, with Myra, with Betty, with the rest of us gathered, reminding us always of your great care, of your great compassion, and of your great love. These things we ask in the blessed name of your son Jesus. Go in peace then and serve your Lord. Let's welcome Solomon and <laughs> the And thank you for coming up folks. We'll let you go back. Let us, uh, before you sit down, let us rise for the benediction. I didn't want you to sit and then pop, have to pop back up. Go out into all the world in peace. Have courage. Hold to what is good. Return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. You may be seated now. Let's sing, You Are My All in All, and the praise team will lead us. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus is a consecrated. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy your name, Jesus, 
Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb. Thanks to the Lord for He is good and His mercies and Three quick things. One, we are not having a voters meeting today. Um, the call committee, um, they've been running into a little bit of a brick wall when it comes to the other pastors that are on the list who said they're not open for a call. Um, Matt shared that with me earlier. Um, they're going to try to get a few extra names and such, but don't fret. Uh, I had said that I won't be here after October 1st. Well, that has kind of changed. Uh, Jack, I plied him with food and uh, drink at Johnny's and uh, Steakhouse, and he said he would uh, he would tag team with me, f and at least until the first of the year, and then we'll see what happens. So, uh, Jack is graciously said he'll be here for non-communion Sundays. I'll be here for communion Sundays. Uh, Pastor Miller will be here for one Sunday in December and do the Advent services. Jack will have the Thanksgiving Eve. So. We'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. I'll still be here for a while, just part-time. Because you don't want to st me sticking around too awful long, because then you'll need an interim for the interim. So hopefully we, we have a, a list of folks. Or if you know a pastor that might be open for a call, we can always nominate pastors and come up with names. Um, the other thing is you've got these uh, sign-in sheets, record of fellowship, if you make sure your name is on that um, so that Morgan can um, look at that and see if it matches up with what we have on the sign up that the electronic sign up that we had today. So it's just a, 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 a touch and go there and let's see what, if it's actually working properly. So make sure you sign those on the way out. Am I forgetting anything? It's good to see all of you. Go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness.